ladies and gentlemen, comedian, entertainer, Daniel Songer. What do you call a guy that likes to get his butt spanked? Pat Trick, I want to entertain you. Who wants to have a competition in farting? Do you want to do something dirty? Yeah, I mean, it's just, woo! I'm telling you. Today, we're in a Boeing 757, operated by America's laziest airline, United. Introduced in 1981, the 757 is powered by Pratt & Whitney PW2000 series turbofans. The wings are designed for improved takeoff performance, a higher cruising altitude, and plowing through tall office buildings. Hi, I'm Daniel Tosh, and this is Comedians & Coach getting complimentary beverages. Daniel Songer, comedian, entertainer. I'm glad you're on my flight. Thank you. Good to see you. Oh. Hi. Hi. Hello. Just so you know, I have a very severe peanut allergy. Oh, good. What can I get you? Ooh, can I have a bag of peanuts, please? Sure. Here you go. I'm not gay. And that's how you turn coach into economy plus. I'll have a ginger ale, and can I keep the can? Here you go. I'm not gay. Uh, anything for you, sir? I'll have an orange juice, and can I keep the carton? <laughs> I'm not gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. How'd you get into comedy? One day, I'm sitting with my family, and I said something that was very comic. Yeah, everybody kept saying, you know, you need to be a comedian. Mm -hmm. And that's what started Comedy Act 1 that incremented Dan all the way to Comedy Act 242. So you've done comedy 242 times? Yeah, it equates to about 60 hours. Every time you sit down on your seat, you're gonna be a fart smeller. Who's filming most of the time? I have a tripod, and so I do everything by myself. I think you're on to something. You don't swear a lot on stage, do you? I wanted to write material that was for everybody, even for handicapped people. It's like if somebody... I'll be honest, when I saw you dancing, I thought you were handicapped. Okay, I know, I know. A lot of performers don't wear shorts. You always wear shorts. The reason I think you wear shorts is because you have amazing calves. Thank you. I dance for like 10 hours straight. And that's why I developed those calves, so... How'd you come up with that turnaround move that you start your show with? I create new dances all the time. You ever been married? I've been married and it just it didn't work out. Do you date a lot? No. No, I haven't been out in years. And no, I'm sorry. <laughs> now you know why my legs are so strong. Huh? Uh, no, I don't. Hey, car you drive? Dodge. Dodge. It's an American car. I'm from Detroit. You better not show up in Detroit with a Hyundai. Oh, you wouldn't believe back in our days, if you had a foreign car, they'd throw bowling balls off of bridges. That can kill somebody, though. They did finally kill somebody, and okay. they stopped doing well, it. Well, that's a great story. Do <laughs> uh, you have any material about planes, about flying in airplanes? It's funny, because, you know, you're at the window. <laughs> Let me look through it, you know? What is that out there? <laughs> You got the window, buddy. All right. I, 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 I see what you're going. Yeah. I've got yeah. the window. Please be my savior. I first wrote my first book, I'm a Statue, and then I wrote Heaven's Headline News oh, and wow. then Jesus' Poetic Song. And you wrote all the songs? Yeah. There's no music. No, but I know how they go, though. I have a melody to all of them. So I need to have you at my house when I'm reading it? That would be very kind. <laughs> Every one of them is individually copyrighted. You can't just copyright the whole book. You have to copyright each page. Each song I copyrighted. It got very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking crazy. All right, Daniel, you've been on the road for how many years? Five. Years. Five years. That's long enough. You deserve a special, and I'm going to make that happen. How's the crowd looking? Oh, there is no crowd. You ready? <laughs> yeah, let's go. All right.
Ladies and gentlemen, comedian, entertainer, Daniel Soger! Hello, Hollywood! Hello, hey! I was down in Cocoa Beach, Florida, and I was walking down the beach. Well, it came time to that time where I had to go to the bathroom. How many people out there are married? I can't hear you. Ma'am, you know, where are you from? You're from Hollywood. Holly, Hollywood. I get off the first exit and there's a thousand cats with their paws in the air. Get back on the road. Why me up? Why me up? Didn't your representative tell you that I'm a flaming transvestite? And then the building inspector showed up. Here come the tears. I can't get no broken record. Well, that's my two hours. Thank you. Good night. You know, the other day I was out there to the shopping mall, out there at the Greenwood Mall, and there was this big fat lady out there. And she was trying on this shirt. Next thing I knew, I saw her go. Her fat started popping out of the shirt. I'm talking, she was huge. A big, big lady. You, you can't believe it, how huge she was. She was bigger than my great-great-grandmother. <laughs> Knock, knock. Hey, Daniel. You're supposed to say, who's there? We have a lot of work to do. Well, Daryl, first I want to welcome you backstage to the world-famous Hollywood Improv. This is where all the greats have gotten their start. How long have you been doing stand-up comedy? I've been doing stand-up comedy for about four years. How old is that video? Eight or nine years old. And did you put it online? Yes, sir, I did. When did you know that it became really popular? Well, when I got a call, they wanted me to fly out here to Los Angeles, and I said, oh, I said, I got something going on now. So, that tape that was online, was that in front of a, a live audience? No, I said, uh, that's like a public access channel like called Store Cable in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and anybody can get on there. So that was a, that was a televised performance? Yes, sir. That's pretty good. Was that your first time? Yes, sir. Good for you. I did stand up for probably seven years before I ever tried it on television. You went the other way. Okay, your strengths have to be your setups. Your punchlines seem to be completely non-existent. Do you worry about that? I do, I worry a lot about it. Did you ever read any of the comments people wrote about you? Yes, I read a lot and it was very disturbing. You know, some of the comments that was, that, that really made me feel bad, you know. The worst part about being a stand-up comedian is the travel. Are you good at traveling? Yeah, when I got money. What do you like to eat when you're on the road? My favorite food is beans and cornbread. I love beans and cornbread because I'm just that country boy, you know. Okay. I love that beans and cornbread because there ain't nothing wrong with beans and cornbread. It feeds you up, you know, so I just love them beans and cornbread. Tell me how you came up with the name World of Pictures. Well, because for one thing, I was in the pictures and I was in the world. So that's the reason why I came up with the World of Pictures. What about working on a catchphrase? Do you think that could be something that maybe would work in your act? I think it would. Your catchphrase could be beans and cornbread. <laughs> just after each joke, just go beans and cornbread. We're gonna head over to the Friars Club, Daryl, so you can meet a bunch of great stand-up comedians and they can give you advice. Uh, first of all, everybody wanted to, uh, you to meet Daryl. Hi, Daryl. First of all, I think you should start out with a joke to break the ice. <laughs> Have you ever thought of changing their first name to I really? I really? I really blew it. <laughs> Tell them what I thought your catchphrase should be. Beans and cornbread. Oh, that's fantastic. Are you kidding oh, me? There, there, that's the name right there. When you did the bit about birth controls for men and you said, we are, guys were in big trouble. I didn't get that joke. What were you going with? Because oh, we want to get us some. You know, we, when we get us some, we want to have kids, right? Not, you want to have kids? You want to have kids? No, everything doesn't have to be true. You can embellish stuff. You can talk about your dog, even if you don't have a dog. You can you can walk down the street and just see something and go, pretend that's your life, you know what I mean? Hey, brother, I, you know what? One thing no. about comedy that they forget to tell you, it takes more guts than talent to get on stage, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Uh, my advice to you would be, um, you might want to blink. A lot of people thought you were stoned. I thought you were high on drugs. Do you smoke pot? 
I have done it once in my life. You know you're on TV right now. <laughs> yes, I know that. But you're on TV too, Tom, that you gay. <laughs> it's hard to top Anne's blinking advice. And then otherwise, I think you're funny. I'm telling you, the stuff you said at this table right here, you just say whatever comes to your mind. I'm telling you, you're gonna be a- Yeah, I'll, I'll gonna work on, we're gonna work on it today. We're gonna write some material, and we're gonna try some different genres of comedy. I think a lot of the advice was very helpful. I think I got great advice. Why do M&Ms come in different colors? They all taste the same. My agent sent me on a audition. In the waiting room, they was playing RK Fire. Who listens to that band anymore? This club is for Tiger Woods. It helps him concentrate. <laughs> I believe that the limp is a racist. How else do you explain speed walking? What's next, the short jump? You know what the worst thing about a family reunion is? It's seeing all your exes. Ooh wee buddy. Daryl, I think we really found your voice out there. But what works best for you is Daryl being Daryl. The world wants to know, are you ready to give another shot? Yes, I am. Well, you're gonna get that shot on the greatest talk show of all time. It's our studio hall! Welcome to a very special recreation of the Arsenio Hall Show. Uh, let's find out who the dog pound is tonight. There they are. <laughs> Those are people who the Jeff Dunham show was still on the air. No, no, that's not what we are. My first guest is a young comic who is taking the country by storm. He's making his network television debut right here, right now. Please welcome Mr. Daryl Blewett. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I went to the mall and there was this real fat white lady trying on a Mickey Mouse shirt. I'm a black guy and even I thought that she was too fat. <laughs> She was so fat, when she put the shirt on, Mickey Mouse got diabetes. I mean, Mickey had a Cambo toe. I was like, if you need a top, honey, get over to the sports chalet camping section. Beans and cornbread! Beans and cornbread! Beans and cornbread! Thank you, and good night. your question. You've been in Hollywood, you've been working on your craft. How has this total experience been for you? Oh, it's been awful, man. It's been great. And, and meeting you has even been even better, you know. Dreams can come true and prayer, you know, do change things, you know. It you does. Do. And you keep working hard on your craft. Touch that. You're number one, brother, in my book. Oh, okay. Thank you. Hey, so I happen to have Tourette's. Uh, so if I shake or curse during the set, it's all right, I'm fine. Huh. <laughs> Mother <laughs> uh, <laughs> If you cut off a chicken's head, it can still walk around for a few minutes before dying. If you cut off a chicken's legs, it cannot. <laughs> ass mother <laughs> The police. <laughs> and shit ass I don't, have a, I don't have a clever one for that one. Hey, Tosh Zillas, Toshy Machines, Tosh Kosh Pagoshers, George Toshington Carvers, Tish Tosh, I was taking a Tosh. Oh, Tasha Tasha. Welcome to What the Sh Motherfuckers. Before we start the podcast, I want people to know that my father wasn't present very much when I was growing up. And I hate Lorne Michaels. Only if you're still mailing stuff like a weirdo, head on down to the stamp store and pick up some stamps. Now, today in the unfinished basement, my favorite young comedian with Tourette's, Benny Feldman. Thanks for coming, Benny. I know we've had some run-ins in the past. I think we're good. Are we good, man? I've never met you. Okay. <laughs> Started off with a dollar in the swear jar, buddy. Let's go. <laughs> Benny Feldman. Yeah. You couldn't have a more stand-up comic <laughs> name. It sounds like you started in vaudeville. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Are you a Shit. member of the Friars Club? No, I'm not. Shit. That name alone should make you an honorary member. So, Shit. how long have you had Tourette's? Only two years. Uh, 
the, with the severe type. Cursing type is called coprolalia, uh -huh. and only like 10% of people with Tourette's have that type. And, and the rest is just kind of more uh, another, a tick, a twitch? Yeah, different noises, different like jerking movements. Sure. Uh, some people sing, actually. <laughs> yeah. Like, well? <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Huh. I'm gonna look that up. I know one lady goes biscuits. I like that one. I mean, do you feel it? Is it is it uncomfortable? Is it physically uncomfortable? It's a physical sensation for sure. Like it's definitely like um like a muscle tensing. Uh -huh. Ass. It's where it's like like the cursing makes it sound like I'm in pain or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's definitely not. Would you compare it to a hiccup? Yeah, actually, I dislike hiccups more than I dislike Tourette's. Oh, so well, I, thank yeah. God. <laughs> do you get a handicap placard? Uh, no. Is it considered a handicap? It's sort of like a disability. But sure. Like, it's certainly nothing that would like inhibit me from, you know, parking. Walking, yeah, parking. <laughs> Is there any scenario where you can trick your mind into saying other words that aren't that uh, shit and fuck? Possibly. Uh, I definitely try to steer to shit and fuck away from like worse words. Right. If I'm going to say like the N word or something. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. So it does come out occasionally. Terrible. Uh, every now and again, yeah. You're I think I've got one of the only excuses. But yeah. yeah, but good luck explaining that in time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who talks more in, in movies, you or black people? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you don't have to answer my nonsense. What about when you're not talking? If I'm alone in my room, mm -hmm. uh, I might every now and again, but for the most part, I'll actually be pretty stable, like maybe just some eye stuff. Uh, it gets the worst when I'm nervous, adrenaline, excited, okay. sexual arousal. Really? <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> if I'm walking on the street and I see somebody who I think is like cute, I'll like it, you know. Oh! Yeah. That's why when I saw you earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Good catch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Guys? Maybe eight cats is too many. Picking stand-up as a career. Oh, yeah. I mean, were you like, maybe I should focus on something that doesn't involve speaking? Uh, I got into stand-up before I had Tourette's. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I just happened to do one-liners. Uh, fucking shit. And then um, Tourette's is really conducive to one-liners. Like, it's it fits, perfect. It, it fits in so on. It's like, oh, this is the best disability to have for my style. <laughs> I agree with you. There's so many people that just go on stage and ramble and tell life stories that are so long. It's like, get to the joke already. Uh, that, that would probably be a little tough for you. Yeah. Here, you, I'll give you the best comedy advice I ever received. <laughs> Everyone is wrong. And it just doesn't matter. <laughs> like, just do what you want to do. And if you enjoy doing it, like, and try to get better, great. That's true. Do you consider your comedy clean or dirty? I consider like the jokes clean. I just do the one dirty joke with the voodoo doll. And the reason I have Tourette's is because my ex-wife made a vibrator into a voodoo doll of me. <laughs> Here's a comic giving another comic uh, advice on their joke. I don't like that you use the word wife. My ex-wife. Oh, yeah. Just because you seem like a kid to me. I don't have an ex-wife. Right, of course you don't. <laughs> but that being said, go back to my other advice. Who gives a shit yeah, you. What, I, what I think? <laughs> Relationships? Has it affected them? Uh, positively? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I think people think it's cute or something. I don't know. Well, I mean, there's, it's a good time meaning uh, where we are in society because maybe maybe 20 years ago, maybe s certain girls would stay away from it. But now I think people oh, yeah. are a little more open-minded. Like, yeah, this isn't a deal breaker. I think like 100 years ago, they would have like literally murdered me. Sure. Uh, <laughs> like, now they can pay to see you. Cast. Oh, that's a mix up, a new one. <laughs> Where's the most inappropriate place you've cursed? I walked past uh, like a preschool and like I kind of like was like, you know, like don't get an erection. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the Tourette's is if I see kids. Like, <laughs> Do you have to wear like a ball gag to go to <laughs> church or synagogue? Or no, I kind of I go into like vibrate mode. Um, I, I had a bit actually about um, I had a substitute teacher and I had a math test. Shit. Sh and they had no idea I had Tourette's. And I'm sitting there, I'm taking the test, and I'm in vibrate mode, and I feel like a big Tourette's like about to happen. And I, like, I look up, I make direct eye contact with the substitute, and I just went like. <laughs> and I went back to my test. I, I'll be honest, I was prepared for that, and that yeah, was well, yeah. still uncomfortable. <laughs> it's the eye contact. All right, that's every question anyone could ever possibly ask you. I appreciate you coming. Podcast over. Yeah, thank you for having me. My pleasure. By the way, I think it's great that you got your own sitcom. And in no way am I bitter about it. You think maybe I could get a cameo? Piece of shit, motherfucker. Oh. <laughs> Let's go.
That one deserves two. Your raccoon was eating out of my garbage can. What do you want me to do? Give it a knife and fork? Sorry, Pop. Turns out words do matter. Aww. What? Supper's ready. Piece of shit ass motherfucker. It is freezing out there. Ricky! <laughs> I'm a dried up boy. It's time for me to wash my face. <laughs> hey ladies, can your man do this? I am your god. I am your god. <laughs> Moist inside and out. I'm a race car. Whoa. Welcome to the amazing credible Ricky Berwick TV show. <laughs> Let's see who's homesick with me today. Oh, it's Daniel Todd. <laughs> <laughs> It's great to be here, Ricky. Ricky, where are yes. you from? I'm from Canada, Ontario. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's nice and cold. Uh-huh. Good for my tongue. Why is cold good for your tongue, just out of curiosity? So I can lick things in a nice cold way. You're very sensual with the camera. How often are you cleaning it? Once a week. Oh, okay. I like to smell my own saliva. I do too. Ah! Who wants to play? <laughs> All right, uh, let's address uh, the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Do you wear prescription glasses, or is that purely for fashion? For fashion. You see how they're crooked? I like, I like it like that. You're pretty limber. Limber. Like, you, you're, you're pretty flexible. Yes. Like, you can really, uh, you know, I, I well, I mean, that's not the best representation of being flexible, but yeah, I get it. Are your bones strong? Like, are they brittle or no? You want me to hit you? No, I don't want to be hit. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. I just said I didn't want to. What would have I had to say to make you not hit me there? You wanted to test me. Growing up, were you like told, oh, sh uh, this is really bad. I've got I've got no chance at having any type of normality. Not at all. You can go forever. I can go forever. I saw the one video of you bench pressing a chair. Impressive. I'm strong as f boy. I'm strong as. <laughs> We're strong as boy. We're strong as boy. And I think I like it. Careful, careful. Are people? nicer to you in the comment section on YouTube because of your disability. Never read YouTube comments. You don't? No one ever does. Well, I read them. What do they say about you? They're horrible things. <laughs> Did they call you a skinny spaghetti? No. No? Well, skinny spaghetti doesn't seem like the worst thing to be called. Do they call you a crippled f They say, oh, that seems <laughs> way over the line. Mm -hmm. All right, so they're not nicer to you. No. I think that's good. <laughs> <laughs> they treat, they the ratings treat us, are good. They though. treat us the same. In general, Twitter the meanest? YouTube the meanest. Yeah. Twitter is nice. I can't wait for Twitter to die. <laughs> if Twitter dies, I die. Really? Yeah. All right, well then in that case, I hope Twitter lives at least another year. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Can your man do this? <laughs> You get rug burn? A lot on my ass. I would assume so. But you know, you just gotta put some. Please don't bounce with me on the bed. <laughs> Sorry. It's time for Ricky's top two. Number two, Helen Hunt. <laughs> What's the worst thing day to day for you? What's the worst pain in the ass? Like I wish people knew how hard this was uh, for me. Messy shits. You know why you're a messy shits, can we be honest, Ricky? <laughs> Your diet. Like just pure garbage. I love McDonald's. Oh, yeah. Mm. 
Mm. Has McDonald's ever sent you a cease and desist letter like, hey, why don't you stop using our products like a crazy person? <laughs> yeah, but I'm waiting. Watching you eat chicken McNuggets may be the single grossest thing I've watched. Oh, baby. <laughs> Oh, I just devour. You watch it every night, though. I don't watch it every. Do you think people are watching your videos for different reasons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going on there. It's time to find the baby. baby. Find the baby. Find the baby. Find the baby. Find the baby. I found the baby. I found the baby. 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 Damn it! No. You got a good relationship with your folks. Yes, I do. Do they approve of some of the shenanigans you do? Here and there. They're, they're supportive. I think my favorite video is your mom subtly walking in in the background. <laughs> That's brilliant because your face kind of like, oh, like I'm an oh. idiot. <laughs> she ruined it. Like she has to be like, ah, oh, there's my son. <laughs> Neighbors nearby? Um, do they hate you? Is what I'm, I want to get at because of all the. I had one comment. I was in the elevator. They're like, I heard you doing the duck song one day, and you did it for quite some time. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> oh, were you embarrassed? A little. Yeah. What do you? You yeah. can't do that. You're in an elevator. Oh, so you're in a high rise. You're in a building. 19th floor. Oh, you're on the 19th floor. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you've got an exit strategy. <laughs> Batman, you, Val Kilmer, or Ben Affleck? Me. I'm Batman! That's pretty good. Yeah. Is Batman your favorite superhero? Spider-Man. Swings away from any size. Catches deeds just like flies. Spider-Man's a dork. What? I don't like that stuff. What do you like? Good question. <laughs> Ricky, 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 can't you see? Sometimes your teeth just hypnotize me. Are you looking forward to the, uh, what's, what's the new one that's, uh, Wonder Woman? Are you gonna watch that? Oh, I wanna date that woman. Do you? Yeah. That's nice of you. She's strong, I'm weak, perfect match. Are you weak? Here and there, like, I can't walk, you know. Uh-huh. How far up can you get? Can you get on your knees and stuff like that? Yeah. But you, you, can you? You want me on my knees. <laughs> I walked right into that, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I supersized the one piece. <laughs> so much catch. I thought you weren't supposed to eat after midnight. Or get wet. Don't tell me what to do. Hello, my name is Brian Etling, and this is my mom, Fran Etling. Hello. I am so t proud that my mom is such a talented organist and piano player. I'm so proud of Brian. He's always eating his vegetables. Mom, you were supposed to say that I give great climate change talks. Anyway, I talk about how climate change is real, caused by humans. It's bad, but we can fix it. As you can tell, my mom plays beautiful piano music. And I think I'm very funny. Welcome back to Dandy. Later, I will reveal the results from our poll whether Mexicans are more likely to stab or rape you. <laughs> my first guest is America's favorite and only climate change comedian. Here to entertain and inform us, Brian. Great to be here, Danity. What proof do you have that climate change is real? Well, for the past 20 years- Poppycock liberal nonsense. <laughs> Brian, let's start with some simple stuff. Where are you from? I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Beautiful. What do you do for a living? I'm a seasonal park ranger at Crater Lake National Park in Oregon. Now, are park rangers as racist as 
police officers, yes or no? Absolutely not. What kind of weapons are park rangers allowed to carry? That would be the law enforcement rangers. But they're just like a police officer. Uh huh. China is nipping at our heels. And with all that new wind capacity they added, they could easily blow past us this year. <laughs> I thought it was a pretty good pun right there. So global warming is a laughing matter. Not global warming. Climate change is very serious because climate change is happening. But the way I feel it is that when I give presentations on climate change, uh -huh. I try not to take myself too seriously. People aren't going to listen to you if it's all doom and gloom. Gotcha. So I always try to have a message of hope in my programs. Is there hope? There absolutely is hope. How can we trust you? You flip-flop so many times on this issue. On global warming? Can we play back what he said just a few minutes ago? Climate change is... Poppycock! You clearly edited that. Well, not according to our poll. 250,000 people believe you said that. Three are undecided. <laughs> Favorite animated show about national parks? I guess it has to be Yogi and Boo Boo. Second favorite. I don't really watch that many animated. I mean, maybe The Simpsons. Brickleberry. Brickleberry? Brickle oh, <laughs> I was a part of that show. <laughs> California is handing out free marijuana to immigrants. Thank you, random hot conservative blonde. What's the largest venue you've performed in front of? I was a guest speaker at Grand Canyon National Park. The entire canyon? <laughs> Not the entire canyon. The Shrine of the Ages Auditorium for an audience of about two, 200 people. Okay, what do you think the canyon can seat? Probably the entire population of the Earth. It could fit in the canyon? I think so, oh, yeah. Oh, you mean like as a mass grave? Are there any other climate change comedians? There's a video, it's called A Gasaholics, and it's hilarious. I always show I showed a lot at the end of my climate change talks. That's stealing. <laughs> is, it, is it stealing? No. Oh. no. I don't care. Any woman who takes paid maternity leave is a criminal. Couldn't have said it better myself. What's a bigger threat to the planet? ISIS or climate change? Climate change. What? Climate change, because climate change has the potential to stabilize all kinds of countries in Africa and the Middle sure, East. Sure, but it's not going to film you and then cut your head off. Well, there's more d chances of diseases, hmm. greater chances of heat waves. So you have more extreme weather with you, you have more flood events. All right, more... I get it. You're pro-ISIS. No, I'm not pro-ISIS. It sounds like you're pro-ISIS. No, <laughs> I want to do something about, about uh, reducing the threat of climate change is what I want to do. All right. How's your mom's piano business doing? She's doing fabulous. It's very weird that you do like this cross-promotion on your thing. To hear wonderful piano music, we hope you'll book my mom or book me for climate change talks. We guarantee it'll change your world. You had your father in one of the videos too? I had to include my dad because he insisted upon being included in this video, didn't you, Dad? Yeah, you and your mother were having too much fun. Don't you think it would be more environmentally friendly if you learned how to print graphics on the screen as opposed to holding up paper? I'm very technically challenged. I'll be the first to admit that. Do you have a lot of props with your comedy or no? To make our children and grandchildren proud, make sure we do all, let's do all we can to reduce the impact of climate change. I do. I, I've got, I've got uh, my inflatable earth ball. What about the chickens? Why are rubber chickens even considered comedy? I guess I grew up with watching different comedy shows and seeing the rubber chickens in there. And so for me, it's, it's just a symbol to make people laugh. It is, but we're supposed to just laugh when we see a rubber chicken? I, I do. <laughs> Why? The Constitution was never intended to protect Muslims. So I want to talk about your, your relationship with your mother, because it confused me on some yes. level. May I ask how old you are? I'm going to be 48 in July. Why are you not eating vegetables, first of all? Actually, I wrote that line for my mother. Okay, so you have no problem with vegetables. Why I absolutely love vegetables. I, I love asparagus, spinach, green beans, you name it. Do you still live with your mother? I spend a few months out there each year in between my, my park jobs. Would you consider yourself a mama's boy? Oh, I don't think so necessarily. I'm, I'm the only son of the family. So biblically, the, you're the only one of importance in the family. <laughs> Listen, I didn't write it, the Bible did. <laughs> Ronald Reagan used to tuck his into his cowboy boots. Oh, right. If people are the main cause of these problems, why don't we just kill all the people? Wow, because I love people. <laughs> we all live on this planet. We all live on this planet together, and we just have to find a way to live on this planet together. You're not like, if this is what's best for the Earth, we should all go. Yeah, so it's, it's not just that it's the population. It's popu population times affluence times technology equals influence. I don't like math. I'm gonna be honest with you. You lose me once you start going math. I like comedy in my presentation. I like slide shows. I don't like math. 
mandatory sex reassignment surgeries for your children. Is that really what we want, America? You smoke weed? I don't. Are you against weed? I'm not against it. I, I'm one of those people that I think it should be legal. I just don't like the smell of it. I don't mind the smell of it. I just don't like how stupid it makes people. I, I, <laughs> That's my core fan base. What are little things that people can do to make the world a better place? I would say- I'm sorry to cut you off mid-thought. I'm told we have breaking news this just in. The ozone has finally collapsed. Everyone who is outside is being cooked alive by the sun. See, I told you climate change is real. Or God is just sweating. Boom! Counterpoint. This just in. I am going to take Fox News hostage until you start taking climate change seriously. Now is not the time for your prop comedy, Brian. It's not a prop, it's a bomb. Oh! You're coming home with me, mister. No supper for you. Get your ball. <laughs>